Hi, I'm Steve at the Carmichael Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to make a custom Bluetooth speaker. Before you start designing and building a custom Bluetooth speaker, it's important that you round up all of the electronic parts that you need so that you can design the enclosure to fit the parts. In my case, I kept things simple by ordering a kit from ParksExpress.com and at the time of this video, the kit was $59. Now the kits come in different sizes, uh, for example they have different size speakers, uh, different Bluetooth and amplifier circuit boards that are different wattages. Uh, they also have additional features such as switches, LED lights, and you can even get a kit that has a rechargeable battery pack if you want to make your uh, Bluetooth speaker portable. Uh, one thing I did add on to the kit were these one inch speaker ports that it recommended. And from the website, you can get the wiring diagram that shows you how to wire everything up once you put it together. I'll include a link to the kit that I bought in the video description below. And this kit is also going to work with the plans that I'm going to make available. So let's take a look at my plans. This enclosure is made up of four sides that are joined together with box joints with the top and bottom attached. The front will have two 3-inch speaker holes with some slats across them to protect the speakers. It'll have some 1-inch ports, an on-off switch, a blue LED that indicates pairing, and a volume knob. The back of the enclosure will have a power jack at the bottom. The right side is going to have the audio in jack, and the top and bottom is going to be shaped like this with a curved front. And I'm going to make this one using this curly maple for the top and bottom and the walnut for the sides. I'm going to make all the straight cuts over on the table saw to cut the sides of the enclosure down to size and then I'm going to attach the templates and make all the detail cuts with my scroll saw. sides cut out and it fits together pretty well I think it'll glue up fine and when you're cutting these out you just want to make sure you're cutting out the right pieces so it'll all fit together I almost made a mistake a couple of times so you need to pay close attention to that so next I'm just going to cut the curved front on the top and the bottom pieces I've got the top and bottom cut so I'm going to cut out the speaker and port holes over on the scroll saw and drill the holes for the electronics on the drill press. Since those holes are not standard sizes and they're all different I'm just going to have to pick the closest drill bit I have and I might have to use a round file to enlarge them a little bit so the electronics fit. Not only are the shafts of these electronic pieces different widths, they're also different lengths. If I try to stick this power jack through the hole in this half inch lumber, it's not long enough to stick out the other side. So what I have to do for all these holes is use a Forstner bit to drill a counter bore hole almost all the way through the board so that this can be recessed so it sticks out the other side. Drill presses usually have a depth stop you can set to keep you from drilling all the way through the board. So you wanna use that feature if you have it. If you're just using a regular drill and bit, you can accomplish the same thing by putting a stock collar on the bit. Either way, you wanna make sure you drill all of your holes now uh, before you assemble the enclosure because it might be hard to get a drill in there later. The volume knob has this circuit board attached to it, so it's going to require a larger counter bore hole in the back. Make sure you don't forget to drill the small pilot holes for mounting the speakers and the circuit board bracket. This 
is a good time to do a test fit of everything to make sure you didn't miss drilling any holes. I don't think I did, so let's glue it up. On the product webpage for this kit, they recommend an enclosure with an internal volume of 0.3 cubic feet. That's about 518 cubic inches. My enclosure has internal dimensions of 10 by 7 by 7, which works out to about 490 cubic inches. It's slightly smaller, so I can't wait to hear how it sounds. Hey everybody, while that glue is drying, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Just click that subscribe button for more fun project videos like this one. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Now let's get back to this project. On my plan, I added some slats across the front of the speakers to protect them and to give the enclosure kind of a vintage look. I was initially going to add five slats, but I thought three would look better, so I changed my plan. I'm just going to cut these thin strips out of maple and glue them on. The template for the bottom piece has marks for drilling holes to mount it onto the bottom of the enclosure. These holes line up with the sides, so I'm going to drill those holes and do the sanding on the top and bottom and ease the edges and get them ready for finishing. I've got everything sanded and I'm almost ready to apply a finish. But one thing you really need to think about when you're building a speaker enclosure is how you're going to get access to the inside to mount the electronics and hook everything up. In this case, most of the electronics are around the bottom. Uh, the only thing up toward the top are the two speakers. So I've decided to glue on the top permanently. I don't think I need to worry about expansion and contraction since it's such a small panel but only time will tell as far as that goes. And then for the bottom, I'm going to attach some rubber feet. So I'm going to use the screws and the rubber feet to attach the bottom to the box and that'll conceal the screws. So let's glue on the top and then apply a finish. I'm going to use some spray lacquer and then I'll show you how to mount the electronics. While the finish is drying on the enclosure, I'm going to show you how to hook up the components in the speaker kit. Keep in mind that working with electricity can be dangerous. You want to set aside the power supply and not plug anything in until after you've triple checked everything. It only takes one wrong move to either damage the components or damage yourself. Uh, so make sure you be careful, educate yourself, and get help from a friend if you need to. This kit is really easy to hook up. The circuit board contains the Bluetooth module and the amplifier and sockets for all of the connections. Each of the electronic components have a plug on the end of the cable that you just need to plug into the correct socket. If you buy this kit or a different kit, you want to make sure you follow the diagram closely so you make sure you get everything plugged into the correct socket. Let's hook it up. The Bluetooth antenna has a unique looking brass plug that plugs into the circuit board right here. It's a little difficult to get it plugged in, so just be patient and eventually you'll get it. The cable for the volume knob plugs in here, but first you need to remove these two black jumpers. The red and black power cable plugs into this socket here. The cable for the on-off switch goes in this middle socket. All four wires for the two speakers combine into this one plug and it plugs into this jack here. 
the auxiliary audio end cable gets plugged into this side of this large socket. The Bluetooth LED cable gets plugged into this socket on the end. Notice there are some empty sockets. According to the diagram, one is for future expansion. One of them is for the red power LED, which I'm not using since the blue LED light will be lit when the speaker's on. The other sockets are for the green battery charger LED indicator and the optional battery pack that you can add on or buy with a different kit. I'm not using those either. Now that the circuit board is all hooked up, I just need to do a little bit of soldering to connect the speaker wires to the speaker terminals and the power cable to the power jack. And then it will be a good time to say a little prayer and plug everything in and test it and hope I don't electrocute myself. <laughs> and then I can mount everything into the enclosure. It's hard to tell which speaker wire is which by looking at the circuit board, but on the diagram it's clearly marked. Just make sure you connect the left positive and negative to the left speaker and the right positive and negative to the right speaker. I'm going to solder my speaker terminals, but you could use crimp connectors if you want to be able to unplug them. The wiring diagram didn't show where to connect the red and black wires to the power jack. So the way you figure that out is you look at the power adapter you're using for this little diagram here and it shows that the post inside the jack needs to be connected to the positive or red wire and that's this post inside here. So you connect the red wire to the terminal that's connected to that post. And then the negative or black wire gets attached to the terminal that's attached to the outer sleeve of the jack. And I contacted Parks Express to confirm that. So I'm going to throw up a diagram that will show you how uh, to wire up this jack if you need it. For this size speaker kit, they recommend a 3 inch porthole tube, but they only sell a 4 inch one, so I'm just going to chop off 1 inch over here on the bandsaw. I bought some of these screw on rubber pads from Ace Hardware, but they come with these half inch screws. Luckily I had on hand some one and a quarter inch screws that are going to do double duty by allowing me to screw the pad onto the bottom as well as screw the bottom onto the enclosure. I just need to drill some pilot holes first so I don't split the wood. The kit comes with this blue and black plastic knob which works just fine, but Parts Express does sell a whole bunch of different knobs, so I ordered this silver and black knob because I thought it'd look nicer. Alright, well here's the finished Bluetooth speaker and I really love the way it looks. I like the combination of walnut and maple and it's a pretty good size too. Uh, let's turn it on and test it out. When you turn it on, it takes a few seconds for that blue LED to light up for it to be ready. So you might want to add the red LED power indicator, and I'll include that in the plans as an option. But once it lights up, then you should be able to connect to the speaker on your phone under the Bluetooth settings. And after you connect, you should be able to watch all of my YouTube videos and have the sound come out of the Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> but to test it out, I'm just going to play a tune for you.
I have to admit that I'm really surprised at how good this speaker sounds. I did a class on how to build it at our local Gwinnett Woodworkers Club and everyone else there seemed to agree that it sounds really good. It's a fun project to make and it's a good one to get teenagers involved in woodworking because they're also attached to their phones. <laughs> it also makes a great gift. Don't forget if you'd like to build one of these yourself, check the video description below for links to everything I talked about. My website article, the plans, and also the kit that I used to build it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.